If you're not running one watt, you're gonna, not going to get any good range on Express LRS, right? Right? You got to be able to fly to the moon, right? <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? So today I've got the Beta FPV 1 Watt Express LRS Micro TX module. We'll be doing an overview of that as well as some of Beta FPV's receivers for Express LRS. I have the standard Nano RX, the flat antenna, and their ceramic antenna receivers. Now all of this was sent out to me by Beta FPV so I could do a review and overview on the channel for you guys, but they've had no editorial input into the video itself. So I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts on this module. Do you really need one watt? Hopefully you can learn something from this. Let's start by opening the box and taking a look to see what you get. They give you a MOX antenna and the antenna end bit is removable. It's an MMCX connector. And they also give you a dipole antenna as well. And finally, they've included a USB-C cable. Taking a look at the Micro TX module, we have a USB-C port here. We have an XT30 port here. One of the most important things to do before you even try to power this thing on is to please have an antenna attached. If you don't, you will destroy and burn up the module. I've removed the two front screws and the side clip and we can open it up and just take a quick look inside here. We've got a nice little fan to help keep this thing cool and it's got a huge heat sink. It's really gonna need that for the one watt. But yeah, there's a little glimpse of what we've got going on inside this ELRS module. Now I'll be using this module with my Tyrannus X90 Plus. Now I flashed this module myself to the latest firmware 2.5.1. Now this is the cool thing about the beta module. It's got this little joystick. And with the joystick, you can hold in on it for two seconds and get immediate quick access to the various Express LRS options. They're listed kind of like this, one menu item at a time, packet rate, TX power, telemetry ratio, put it into buy mode, and the update firmware section. As you can see, we can change our packet rate really fast here. And you can just it was press to confirm and go into the TX power section. This is really useful to be able to just dynamically change your TX power and go all the way up to a thousand milliwatts or back down. And then you, again, all you have to do is just press to confirm and it's done. So really candy, really convenient. You don't even need the Express LRS script technically to be able to change some of the basic settings with this module. So the very first thing you need to do on day one when you put the module in the radio, screw on an antenna and turn it on is you have to go into the radio settings and enable the external module bay. To enable power and communication to the module, you're going to go to the menu. You're going to go into the model that you're using. First, make sure the internal RF is off and then enable the external RF. And you're going to look for CRSF, that is Crossfire. That's the Crossfire protocol. That's what Express LRS uses. As you can see, it's got power now and we can use it. Now, one of the things you might notice taking yours out of the box is that yours might not look exactly like this. And that's because the factory firmware that these things ship with is not the latest version of Express LRS, at least at this time. So I put this on here. That's why the interface looks the way it does. Now, I will warn that in the first time I did this, it actually gave me a firmware mismatch warning. That's because the factory firmware had a different name than the official firmware. If you see that warning, you can safely ignore this. Generally, I would say do not ignore an Express LRS firmware warning like that. But in this case, if you see that exact warning that I have up here, it's fine to continue and go ahead and update. I want to briefly cover Beta FPV's Express LRS receiver series. So first, we're going to start with the RX, the Nano RX here. Now, this is a full size RX and it also supports a UFL connection and it comes with this T antenna that Beta FPV provides. This is a pretty typical size. It's actually not much bigger than a Crossfire receiver there. So you probably put that on five inch quads or similar. Now next we've got these little nano receivers and this little guy is going to give you really darn good range for its size. So this is called the Express LRS Lite or RX. And oh, I just dropped it. It's so tiny. And this one is really cool. Beta FPV makes this is called the flat antenna, the ELRS flat antenna. Now, 
this is going to get worse range than, or this little light one, but I got to tell you, this is pretty neat, and I've actually already implemented one of these in one of my whoops here. As you could see, I can put it on here and not have to worry about this antenna breaking off, and it is perfect for little whoops like this to add ELRS to. I don't have to worry about it, and I got perfect plenty of range with the flat antenna. So got some nice little Express LRS receiver options here from Beta FPV. So now I'm gonna answer that burning question. Do you really need a one watt Express LRS module? Is something like this really necessary to enjoy Express LRS and get good range? So to answer that question, I'm gonna use some evidence and my own personal experience. If you go to the Express LRS GitHub page, they actually have posted a records list of power outputs and range achieved. And it is absolutely incredible what people have done on low output power with Express LRS. People have gone super far. And that's where the whole joke of flying to the moon on one watt Express LRS comes up. If you were to ask in the ELRS groups about needing one watt, someone would probably ask you, what do you want to do, fly to the moon? Back when I purchased my first Express LRS module uh, a little over six months ago, and it, that module only goes up to 250 milliwatts. However, it has been more than I've needed and then some. In fact, to conserve battery life on the other module that I use, I only tend to run it between 50 to 100 milliwatts. And like I said, I get range all day, perfect, it's fine. So. Am I gonna run this at one watt? Probably not. However, this is not a bad thing to have in your bag. Look, the difference between the 500 milliwatt Beta FPV Express LRS and the one watt is literally 10 bucks. You might as well just get it so that you have the one watt for edge cases. I mean, you are set. You will be set for any kind of flying you wanna do. My general approach with hardware is usually, if it's cheap enough, I'll just buy whatever I can potentially max out, even if I might not necessarily use it, because I would hate to run into a situation where I might be able to utilize it and not have it. So, uh, so that being said, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna go do some flying with this Beta FPV Express LRS. It was really nice to breathe life into my Tyrannus X9D+. Plus. I've got a video on how to upgrade this thing to Edge TX if you're interested in seeing that. So link to that is also down in the video description below. I've had this radio for years now and it still runs great. So thanks to this, I'm able to use it and get some more life out of it. You guys take care. I'm gonna do some flying and I'll see you in the next video.